Stuart Masella, who is from the EXP agency in South Africa, he's the MD. Before that, a long career in uh, uh, APSA in particular, with the various uh, sports properties that uh, APSA has. Good evening to you, Stuart. Uh, let's ask you a rugby question first. Are we going to get through to the semi-finals? Good evening. The Springboks should get to the semi-finals. Is it one of the top three teams in the world? They should be up there. And if we have to beat, play Australia? If we have to play Australia, let's play to our strength. Let's play to the players that Henneke Mayer has, has chosen. And we should get there. What, what's changed from when we played, uh, the, the oh no, when the, the Japanese played us? Let me put it blossoms. like that. <laughs> I mean, I, I just, I, I'm not getting a sense that I can put my heart behind the box right now if, we, if these guys can have us for, for sushi from time and time again. I think it's, it's the business of emotions, what you're talking about, mm. you know, that emotionally we go into it and, and it's almost like war. But now war is being played by, by the sports teams and everyone expects their country to win when you go to war. You know, and, uh, and I think we underestimated mm. the Japanese, but I think we've learned our lessons and there won't be underestimation, be it Wales or be it Australia. I think the Springboks should go to the same mm. And Stuart, as we continue our conversation, we're bringing up some of the social media co uh, conversations as well because this was really big this week. And as you can see here, that's Obama and Michelle pulling quite a face saying that, I care less about the USA loss, so they're not quite impressed with us I, there. I don't know if uh, Barack Obama knows about rugby. Should we put it that way? <laughs> yeah, I think he confuses rugby with the NFL some, <laughs> somehow. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know, but uh, yeah, it shows. It shows the passion that people have got when it comes to, to sports. But mm -hmm. let's talk about the money behind uh, the different sporting codes. Uh, I mean, I think there was a, a light-hearted conversation that, uh, you know, why do black people want to play rugby? Um, because it's such a painful thing to do. Why don't you go play football instead? But if you look at the money that goes into rugby as against other sporting codes, what does that actually look like? I think if, if you look in, in South African context, rugby is one of the top three paying sports. So mm. that's why people go, in, go, into, go into playing rugby. But we've traditionally have had a lot of people that have, that have played rugby before. And it's a good paying sport. And besides the good paying part of the sport, I think a lot of the rugby guys when they start they stop finishing their careers most of them go into business you know so there's there's a, a lot of element that they teach them about business mm. that's why a lot of players come through universities and mm. and, and and learn those business skills of course, a lot of these guys as in most sports at the very top they make a lot of money mm. but just below the surface the money's not that great whether it's golf or tennis or, or soccer or cricket but i wanted to ask you uh, apsa and think of apsa and i'm not asking you to speak for apsa but you used to work there the apsa curry cup apsa with the spring box apsa this apsa that that's a lot of money. I mean, does the bank believe that that money, it must believe that money is well spent? How do you measure the returns? I think sponsorship is one element of marketing. So there's a various lot of elements of marketing that, that comes through when someone thinks people can do advertising, can do that. But with sponsorship, I think you talk to the emotion, you know. People tune in to what you're sponsoring. So a lot of rugby fans. So if you look at APSA for for either Springboks, because you know with Springboks it's different from Karakap. Upside Karakap, you, you had your core Africans market that wants to watch Karakap. But when it comes to Springbok, then the whole nation tunes in. Mm. So you, your diversity and your market segment is different. So, so you look at brands, choose properties based on those. What our target market, what our business objectives, and how then do we tie those two together? Mm. And then with the sports, then emotionally it gives you the connection. Because you know, if you are a Rugby fan, for example, you know, Saturday, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock, 7 o'clock, you'll be sitting there tuning in, and that's when the brand gets to talk to you. Wh what about this uh, trend of uh, celebrities um, coming in as uh, brand ambassadors into these sporting codes? But th you have a celebrity who's a model who's never played uh, football in her life and comes in and becomes a face of the NetBank Cup, for example, gets a very nice check of 7 million rand in the process, and yet this person probably doesn't know how many people there are in a football team to start with. Yeah, it depends on, on, on what the brand is looking for. So in this instance, the brand is saying, we've got the core ma football market that mm. gets to watch football. But you also got a lot of people that follow the celebrities and in terms of lifestyle. So if you get this person into the sport, you're bringing in a completely different target market because they're following this particular person to mm. say, okay, let's hear what they, they have to say. How are they involved in football? And, and, and the thing with sport is that once you go to one game or once you start following one game, even rugby, 
on sports, you know, you get hooked to it. And that's why brands are using a lot of these mm. brand ambassadors and influencers. So, you know, how many players in a rugby team? That's difficult. That would be, I don't know. So you, <laughs> so you, I would you never qualify for one of these sponsorships if no, you don't no, know the number? No, but this, this is my point. So um, the person who got the 7 million rand check in a net bank, uh, w whatever cup it was, mm -hmm. um, there was a big uproar because that money could have gone into development and this money was going to one person and yet there are developmental clubs where we're talking about building the pipeline that are in dire need of funding and because this person is famous and they've got followers on twitter mm. they back seven million at the expense of something else but then what you what you said earlier was that it's not necessarily at the expense of something else because you're also doing development yeah so 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 it's about you you, you take a business and say what is it that i want to achieve and then you say, I've got 10 bucks uh, in my 10 rands. This is how I'm going to divide my 10 rands. I'm going to go into sponsorship for three rands. I'm going to use two rands to go into the Sunday Times. I'm going to use three rands to go into development. So that's how you deviate. Yeah. And it t talks to the different market segments then that you want to bring in. That's why I said it depends on what people want to bring in. Mm. You know, you look, at, look at a brand like Heineken. You know, they sponsor the Rugby World Cup. The Rugby World Cup is far from here. We're, not, we're in South Africa. But people are engaging with Heineken because you buy the product, you get to participate in the competition, and you might go over to England to go watch the game. So for them, that's then yeah. product integration. So wherever you are in the world, now you're able to engage with Heineken based yeah. on their sponsorship of, 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 of the World Cup. Stuart, tell us about EXP. I mean, you've gone from APSA to that, I think, and you were at Supersport for a while yeah. b b before that. And this is the whole industry that services the industry of sponsorship and big sport, isn't it? It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a huge industry. It's a, it's, a, it's, it's a particular industry in the marketing segment that, that works. So I, I'm lucky because I've come from a brand perspective, at the rights holder, and now I'm sitting at an agency. And you can see how all these three partners work together to bring you the product. You know? So the product, for a lot of people, it's the 80 minutes of the rugby game or the 90 minutes of football game. But the product is more than that, you know. So you look at other brands, the brands like DHL, with Western Province, what they did is to say, okay, how do you then satisfy the people that deliver on behalf of, of DHL? One day the guys wake up in the morning, they're in the overalls, they are ready to go deliver stuff. Brian Abana comes with you to go, to go deliver. Mm. Imagine what happens to you as a, bre as a, as a brand when Brian Habana comes in to deliver your parcel. Mm. The, mor the, 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 the happiness it brings mm. to the morale of the staff, it's what sponsorship is all about. You know? mm. It's that emotional connection that, that it gives you. Brian Habana is a Springbok wing. I, I know who Brian is. <laughs> he's the square guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's a, what do they call him? A wing? Yes. Mm. Exactly. Yeah. So I know something. So. <laughs> Banyana, banyana. Yeah. Um, th for me, this is where the conundrum lies because it seems as if it's the sporting codes that uh, are dominant that are attracting the most funds and the most branding and the most sponsorships. And then it's difficult for those who are overlooked to actually penetrate and break through. And I think Banyana, Banyana is, is, a, is an example of that. I don't think they're getting as much support, sponsorships, funding wise, as Bafana Bafana does. You're lucky you're sitting with someone that, that, that has worked with Banyana for a long mm. time. So I think Sasol, we have to give kudos to Sasol. They've been there with, with Banyana Banyana for seven years. And in, in the process that they've been there, they've helped the team to qualify for the Olympics. They became the first team to qualify for the Olympics. They became the first team to beat Nigeria in an official game. So Banyana Banyana are at the cusp of qualifying for the next Olympic uh, Games in Rio next year. So yes, sponsorships does a great deal to help uh, the teams. So Banyana has succeeded over the years if, 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 you, if you look at most other brands in the sports in South Africa, Banyana have succeeded because they've had a, a, a bank, a, a petrochemical company, Sasol, that has believed in them, that has supported them, and, and, and not only Banyana, as you're speaking, David, below Banyana, it's the Sasol League, and that's where the players mm. are regularly playing so that by the time they get to Banyana, they're quality players. Fascinating discussion. As always, uh, no comfort in ending it here, but we have to. That's it for business for this week. Thanks to Stuart Masela, MD of the EXP Agency.